what's going on everyone Chris here doing a video for uh, my digital library and in no way am I endorsing digital movies this is just for convenience sake you know if you're out of town or if uh, you're at a friend's house girlfriend's place or what have you it's good for convenience sake I've always been a physical media guy and will always continue to be one for as long as they put out movies on disc but like I said if you're in bed you have your iPad in hand and you don't feel like getting up and uh, putting a disc in the player. This is cool just for that reason alone. So I got like 700 and so movies right now. And uh, I did a video like this that showed off my digital library for a couple of years. But I've had uh, at least a few hundred more movies added to the library since then. So let's take a look. So I got Identity Thief, which was pretty fun, man. Always like uh, Melissa McCarthy. And uh, Predators... I really like that one a lot, actually, from the sequel movies of the uh, Predator franchise. That's my favorite. I didn't care much for Predator 2 or uh, The Predator, the latest one. Got Strip Tease, Kingpin. All right, Roman Holiday, which was uh, newly released. Thankfully, we got that on Blu-ray thanks to uh, Paramount. And got uh, some of the uh, Alfred Hitchcock films that were uh, recently released on 4K. Also got Vertigo, but that's way down on the list because I actually added that one when the uh, Blu-ray release came out years back. The Man from Uncle, Enemy at the Gates, fantastic film, man. Love Ed Harris in that film and the rest of the cast. Uh, of course, uh, Drew Law is in the movie. So yeah, wonderful film. The Lies Beneath, really nice thriller. The Odd Couple, love Jack Clement and Walter Matha, man. Excellent chemistry. And uh, I think I saw bits and pieces of The Odd Couple too, which uh, they made back in the 90s, but... Uh, yeah, I gotta add that one. Gotta check that one. Check that one out again. Also, the Grumpy Old Men movies. Gotta add those eventually. And uh, the Sin City movies. Love those. Corvette Summer Man. Young Mark Hamill. Uh, before you know, Star Wars uh, took off. Well, this was actually around Star Wars, or rather, a year after, because Star Wars came out in '77. This was released in '78. But this was filmed, you know, before uh, Star Wars was big. So uh, yeah, Young Mark Hamill there. So uh, Gone in 60 Seconds, the remake with Nicolas Cage. Really good film. Uh, it's not a great film by any means, but it's a solid popcorn action flick. And of course, can't go wrong with Angelina Jolie. And uh, Con Air, man. I love Con Air. Excellent film. The Rock. From all the Michael Bay films, The Rock is my most favorite. Again, Ed Harris, Nicolas Cage, and uh, James Bond 007 himself, man. Sir Sean Connery. And... Uh, before you start judging, I do have some romantic comedies, you know. You gotta have some chick flicks. Variety is a spice of life, as I say. The Hunted, my friend's in that film. He's in one of the opening scenes. Uh, he's out in the forest. Eddie Velez, who was also in uh, White Chicks. Really great guy. He was also in the A-Team back in the 80s. And he has a huge library of movies, but a uh, really cool guy, Eddie Velez. Passenger 57 with the Wesley Snipes. Liam Neeson, of course, got to get some Liam Neeson movies going. Run all night, nonstop. Anger Management, Adam Sandler, of course, and that. And I love Horrible Bosses. I got one and two of those. And some of these films, um, they're not released on Blu-ray yet, but I added it to my digital library just to check it out in HD. And, you know, you can't compare digital movies to physical media. It's just... Uh, you know, it's just you can't compare it. The quality is not there. But like I said, for convenience sake, it's uh, cool to have some of these mo movies as far as a digital library goes. Salt with uh, Angelina Jolie. And I got some of uh, Steven Seagal's films. Well, the best ones, in my opinion. I really don't care much for his B-movies. But I still got to add On Deadly Ground. Also, Fire Down Below and um, Exit Wounds. Also, a Half Past Dead, but honestly, I really don't care for that movie. Didn't really care much for it at all when I saw it in theaters. But yeah, Under Siege, man, I love that one. And Above the Law, of course, that's the movie that started his career. And that was actually filmed at his dojo, the opening sequence. Yeah, that's actually at his dojo, which was right by a Burbank, California, in the corner of Coenga and Magnolia Boulevard, which is a liquidator's place now. So yeah, a lot of uh, interesting history at that spot. And many people that work there have no idea that the opening scene of uh, Above the Law was filmed there. Marked for Death, where he's going after the Jamaicans. Awesome film. And I really like Glimmer, man. I know that one didn't do too well, but 
I like this one with the chemistry between uh, Keenan Ivory and Seagal. And Training Day, of course, that won Denzel Washington, the Oscar. Awesome film. Shawshank Redemption, of course, got to have that. And uh, Two Guns, Seven, another excellent movie. The Italian Job, The Wedding Planner, and uh, Beavis and Butt Do America, man. I absolutely love that film. So hopefully Paramount will get that one released on Blu-ray because... I got to give it up to Paramount. They've been releasing some of their catalog titles recently. Got uh, The Two Jakes. Picked that one up uh, recently. Also, uh, Vampire in Brooklyn. Private Parts is released finally with Howard Stern. Grown Ups. Beverly Hills Ninja. You know, I've always liked Beverly Hills Ninja with the late, great Chris Farley. I know when he saw this film, he actually cried. Not in laughter. He just uh, absolutely hated the film. But, you know, it's... Uh, Chris Farley, you know, he always uh, gives it 110% in his movies, but I personally liked it. Of course, it's not on the same level as Tommy Boy or Black Sheep, but still a fun movie nonetheless. And of course, you got Chris Rock in that movie too. Commando, the director's cut. I highly recommend the uh, director's cut, man, when he just slices that guy's arm off. And just, uh, it's just more grittier, you know. Um, There's really not much to it. It's just a few quick uh, scenes when he comes out of the shed. It's just uh, more bloodier, you know, but it's it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. So, yeah, they got the uh, theatrical cut and the director's cut for digital. But, yeah, don't get the two confused and by mistake adding the uh, theatrical. You definitely want to get the director's cut. So uh, Eraser, really like that one, too. Not bad. It's kind of underrated from his, uh, you know, classic movies. End of Days, that one was, you know, it's not bad. This one's not bad at all. So-so. But I still, you know, it's a Schwarzenegger film, man. It's a popcorn flick. You know he's going to deliver the goods. Sleepy Hollow. Love Sleepy Hollow, man. The Atmosphere. You know, it's a Tim Burton film. And of course, uh, Johnny Depp, Christina Ricci. Also, recently got uh, Michael Keane's uh, Beetlejuice because that was released in a 4K too. And The Goonies. Love The Goonies, man. One of my childhood favorites. Total Recall. Another great one, which uh, recently got announced for a 4K. So looking forward to that. Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo. You know, it's not my favorite film, but there are some funny moments in here. You know, like uh, when they're hiding in the ceiling and uh, Eddie Griffin farts and they fall. That scene was pretty funny. Being the movie. But yeah, as far as uh, the sequel, you can compare it to Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo, the original one. I absolutely love that one, which I do have in my library, which is further down below. But uh, yeah, being the movie, really like that one too. It's a pretty funny movie, man. But it, you know, it's um acquired taste. Not everybody likes this type of humor, but personally, I do. Collateral, excellent film with uh, Jamie Foxx and Tom Cruise, Event Horizon, which is going to get re-released, I believe, in January. So looking forward to that. Willy Wonka. Gotta love Willy Wonka, man. This is one of the movies that I saw quite often in the elementary class just uh it's a magical film man it really is white chicks again as i mentioned my friend um eddie velez he plays one of the detectives he's a latino guy he plays a detective really funny movie man especially the opening scene at the liquor store got drive a night at the roxbury a film again that hasn't been released on blu-ray but i wanted to get this for uh, my digital library absolutely love it bridesmaids Shall We Dance? You know, I really like Shall We Dance. Um, and uh, J-Lo just looks absolutely gorgeous in this one. But yeah, the atmosphere in this film and the story in itself, I thought it was really well done. The Shadow with uh, Alec Baldwin. I remember seeing this in theaters in 1994, and I liked it, man. I really do. And uh, Alec Baldwin has the uh, charm. You know, he has the whole charm, the whole look, appearance thing happening. You know, it's a really... Uh, he has that uh, nostalgic look to himself, you know, that fits really well with the story in itself. So Vegas Vacation, which is a pretty, pretty decent film from the National Lampoon movies um, like that one. Perfect Murder. You know, this one is the uh, remake of uh, Dial M for Murder with, of course, uh, Michael Douglas, the great Michael Douglas. And I really like this one, man. I really do. Kind of resembles that other film, um, Unfaithful, with the Richard Gere in certain aspects. But uh, if you've never seen A Perfect Murder, do check it out. And The Game, man. Fantastic film. One of my favorite. One of my absolute favorites, of course, with uh, also Sean Penn. Did he hear about The Morgans? Which is a 
you know, decent comedy. It's not great, but it, it's just fun. You know, it's just one of those fun movies you want to kick back and you don't have to think about anything and you just watch it for what it is. So, yeah, really do enjoy that one. The Holiday, also uh, Speed. And, of course, there's Speed, too, but I really don't like that one, man, when they're out on the uh, ship, the cruise ship. It's just really stupid, which is like, which is another reason why, you know, uh, Keanu didn't want to do that sequel. And I don't blame him. It was a really dumb movie, honestly. But uh, yeah, you, of course, you know, got Sandra Bullock who returned for the role. But uh, love Speed, man. Just an absolute classic. It's uh, one of those movies that never gets old, you know, it's timeless. And even comparing it to some of the action films today, this film was still way ahead of its time. And the movie is, uh, what now, 26 years old. This was released in 1994. Four-year-old virgin. Fun movie, man. Can't go wrong with that one. With, of course, Steve Carell. 51st Dates. It's complicated. Another film that I absolutely enjoy quite quite a bit. And excellent chemistry with uh, Meryl Streep, Steve Martin, and Alec Baldwin. The whole feel of the movie and, you know, the location of where the movie shot and the music in the movie. And uh, that has some quite uh, quite a bit of funny moments as well. But I really like that one. I got the Sex in the City movies too. Of course, like I said, you got to have some chick flicks. Got Titanic. Got uh, The Cable Guy, which is really underrated in my opinion. One of uh, Jim Carrey's best dark comedy movie. And of course, Matthew Brod Broderick's in that film. The Mask. Love The Mask, man. And how gorgeous is uh, Cameron Diaz in their, you know, screen debut. Really beautiful. And it holds up pretty well too. I can watch The Mask all the time and never get sick of it. Dumb and Dumber, man. I gotta have Dumb and Dumber. So this is the unrated edition. They got the theatrical cut. And personally, I prefer the theatrical cut because of the uh, the screen time. It just flows a lot better, the running time of the film. The unrated uh, has some unnecessary scenes, in my opinion. But uh, I gotta add the, the theatrical cut. So hopefully we'll get the theatrical cut release sometime on a Blu-ray as well from uh, Paramount. And uh, yeah, I got to be thankful for some of these boutique labels, man. If it wasn't for them, we probably wouldn't see most of these movies. Well, not these in particular, but a lot of great classic films that uh, wouldn't see the light of day because the studios themselves don't want to release it. So, you know, like Scream Factory, Kino Lorber, and then there was uh, Twilight Time, which unfortunately went out of business. Just go with it. One of my absolute favorite uh, Adam Sandler movies, man. Really well done. And... Uh, you know, it's funny and has that charm to it. A lot of heart, actually, in that one. But some, of course, silly moments. I mean, it is an Adam Sandler film. You don't mess with the Zohan. This is a crazy film, man. But it works well, too. You know, this is just uh, no holds bar. This is where uh, Adam Sandler becomes a hairstylist. But uh, the first half hour is just absolutely hysterical. And throughout the film, too, but especially the first half hour. So I'm not going to continue on and rambling on every single film, but I just wanted to chime in on some of them. i uh, got Clueless, The Invisible Man, which is fantastic. Blood Father, one of my favorites from Mel Gibson, Onward. Unfortunately, you know, Onward didn't get the, the chance to be in theaters. I think only for about a week because of the pandemic situation. I wish some of these films that uh, all the filmmakers, the cast and crew... You know, they put their blood, sweat, and tears to release some of these films for a theatrical release. Unfortunately, they didn't get the chance. I really wish that some of these films, once the theaters open, can at least get one week of uh, theatrical time, you know, in theaters. So at least they can say, hey, you know what? Our films were released in theaters and they can check it out. I think that would be really nice, but I doubt that uh, they'll do that since it's been released on digital and Blu-ray and whatnot, 4K. So uh, Days of Thunder, The Call of the Wild... Birds of Prey, Gretel and Hensel, you know, didn't really care much for this one at all. The atmosphere was perfect, the cast was great, but the story, eh, it just didn't work for me. You know, they had the perfect location, a perfect house. They could have really do something special with this film, but it was a disappointment. I'm sure some folks liked it, but hey, you know, we all have different tastes, so. Mask of Zorro, which was recently released uh, in 4K along with Top Gun. Goodfellas, Sonic the Hedgehog, they really did a great job when they uh, went back and redid uh, Sonic to look him, to make him look like uh, his uh, original self from the video games. Sorry, got a text coming through. Uh, what can he do? Live recording here. Sorry about that. We'll continue on. Robin Hood, Underwater, Bad Boys for Life, 
which was a really good movie. Love that one. Third film from uh, Will and uh, Martin. So I got the uh, Star Wars films, the prequels, and the uh, George uh, Lucas's uh, movies from, you know, from their classics, but not the original theatrical versions, of course. This is when he added in all the other stuff. So 1917, which is fantastic as well. Just Mercy, another excellent film. Rise of Skywalker, uh, Spies in the Skies. Uncut Gems, man. This is Adam Sandler, unlike uh, anything you've ever seen him do. And he actually refused to do this film several times. And they went back and asked him again. And he finally said, okay, I'll do it. Richard Jewell, The Deep. Uh, the Good Liar was actually a really good thriller. Really surprising um, ending. I didn't see that one coming. Actually kind of... Felt like, you know, something interesting is going to happen, and it definitely delivered. Unfortunately, this didn't do too well at the box office. And the thing is, today's generation, they're so spoiled. They're expecting, you know, mindless action popcorn blockbusters. But you can't have that all the time, you know. Give a chance to some of these uh, other type of uh, stories, too, because they really are well-written. Notting Hill, Doctor Sleep, which was excellent. So most of these films I've done a review for on my uh, YouTube channel. You can check it out, like for Parasite, Doctor Sleep, Uncut Gems, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, which is uh, Seinfeld's favorite film, Terminator, uh, Dark Fate, Gemini Man, The Lighthouse, which was excellent, Judy, which won Renee Zellweger her uh, Oscar, Joker, man, got to talk about the Joker, excellent performance, just the movie in itself, he definitely delivered man Joaquin Phoenix well-deserved Oscar for his performance and he definitely made Heath Ledger proud man he's probably looking down on him and saying boy man he really delivered but yeah Heath and Joaquin both fantastic actors and they gave a really unique take on the Joker in itself and of course all due respect to uh, Jack Nicholson so yeah I love his Joker too you know they're all different you know that's what's great about the uh these comic book adaptations so Ad Astra, Rambo, Last Blood, pretty gritty film, man. So, uh, yeah, really liked it. You know, it's not a great film, of course. I like uh, the one before this one, the fourth film, and, of course, First Blood. They're all decent. They're all good in their own ways. Abominable, the uh, Cotton Club Encore, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, of course, man. Well, um, what's his name? Quentin Tarantino. Really good film. The Equalizer. The Long Shot, uh, what else we got? Apocalypse Now, which looks fantastic in 4K. The Grey, Peanut Butter Falcon, really liked that one too. A lot of heart in that movie. And uh, the cast did a great job, you know, Shia LaBeouf. So we got uh, Santa Claus 2, 3, The Mummy. So I'm going to keep on scrolling. Hobbs and Shaw, Toy Story 4, the uh, 007 films from Daniel Craig, Wizard of Oz, Crawl, House of a Thousand Corpses. Devil's Rejects, Charles Play, and um, Spider-Man, Shining, of course, with Jack Nicholson, Aladdin, which is the live-action version. Ratatouille, love Ratatouille, man. One of my favorites from Pixar. So uh, there you go, uh, Shaft, Aladdin, the animated one, John Wick, man. I absolutely love John Wick. And I mentioned several times before, I met uh, Keanu Reeves at Starbucks. This was right after uh, John Wick 2, and I asked him... Um, you know, what's going on? I, when are you guys doing uh, John Wick 3? He's like, oh, a month from now, I'm headed to New York to start filming. But anyway, long story short, really down-earth guy. He was wearing his uh, biker uniform with the helmet on. Of course, he took it off at Starbucks, but really cool guy, man. Uh, just shaked his hand and told him how much I appreciated his films. He's like, thanks, man. I appreciate it, you know. He was with a lady friend, so I didn't really want to bother him too much. But if you ever come across Keanu Reeves, just know, man, he's a really cool gentleman. Casino, The Santa Claus. Grew up watching The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Love that one. So, uh, yeah, like I said, have some romantic comedies, have some action, have some horror. You know, variety is a spice of life for sure, as I mentioned. The Fast and the Furious, the original. You know, uh, what's interesting about this franchise, when Universal made this film, they didn't know what to do with it. They shot it in 1999 and they shelved it for a couple years. So it was kind of like a slow time for them. They're like, oh, what the hell? All right, let's release it. And then, sure enough, uh, it ended up becoming a multi-billion dollar franchise. So looking forward to Fast 9. Although I'm more of a car guy, you know, I would uh, rather just see more cars than mindless action because that's pretty much where the franchise is headed. 
Last I heard, they might go into space for Fast 10. I don't know, but anyway, the original one, love that one. Alita, Battle Angel, Captain Marvel, Greta. I really liked uh, Greta. Interesting thriller, man. Um, you know, it's not original story, as far as story is concerned, but uh, it's... Uh, what's, let me look at the cast, actually. I forgot her name. Isabella, yeah, Hubbard plays uh, Greta. Uh, she's just fantastic, man. She's really creepy, and just her performance overall is just really, really well done. So I uh, got some of the uh, Batman films from the 90s. Of course, uh, got uh, Batman, which was released in 89. Of course, uh, Batman Returns in 92. So yeah, there you go, 89. So Batman Forever, Alien. God, I, God, I love Alien, man. Absolute classic with, uh, you know, of course, directed by Ridley Scott. So uh, there you go. Got another Keanu there uh, film, Replicas. What Men Want. Personally, I prefer uh, What Women Want with Mel Gibson and Helen Hunt, which was really well done. But, uh, yeah, that's considered the, not a sequel, but, you know, the woman's perspective rather than the men. So, Aliens. We'd like to see Aliens being released um, on a 4K sometime, man. Definitely. Because, you know, Disney owns a 20th Century Fox library. So, hopefully they won't... Uh, Keep it in a vault, so to speak, as they like to do with the Disney titles. So that's pretty much what they're doing right now with 20th Century Fox titles. But yeah, Disney, if you're watching this, which I doubt. But anyway, please release some of those catalog titles, man. Also, of course, um, what else are we waiting for, man? We're, we're uh, waiting for some bunch of good classics to be released in 4K, including uh, True Lies. Also, The Abyss, definitely The Abyss in 4K. Cloverfield, Glass Charade, Can You Ever Forgive Me, Vertigo, of course, I have the other films from Hitchcock above, as you saw earlier. The Vanishing, which is pretty cool. Aquaman, The Mule, another uh, solid film written, well, not written, but uh, starring and uh, directed by Clint Eastwood, which is based on a true story. All right, so uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, Mortal Engines, Creed Two, Green Book, which won uh, Best Picture at the Oscars a couple years ago. Overlord, fantastic film, man. Made in Manhattan, The Predator, The Happy Time Murders, man, that was crazy. Love that one with the Muppets. It's like the dirty version of the Muppets, um, but hysterical, man. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy just loves doing movies like that. She's just great at it. But, uh, you know, if you're not into slapstick comedy, you're not going to like it. you got to really appreciate the slapstick humor to really like that one. But, like I said, I love slapstick humor every now and then. Halloween, 40 years later, man. Fantastic film. This was, of course, the follow-up right after the original Halloween. And looking forward to the sequel to this one, which uh, unfortunately didn't get released this year because of the pandemic. So we'll see what's up next year with that one. Fast Five. Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible Fallout. What a badass man. He's uh, currently filming the uh, sequels back to back. So uh, I heard he's going to go to space for another movie. So uh, we'll see what he does, man. He always uh, delivers the goods, Tom Cruise. And uh, Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb with the late great uh, Robin Williams. Deck the Halls. Of course, got the Rambo movies there. So there you have it. I think some of these other ones I've shown in my previous update. You got Solo, Hook, Scarface, some of all fears, Jack Ryan collection, Hunt for Red October, Predator, Jim Carrey, Dark Crimes, which is a pretty solid film. Again, that was a movie that they shelved for a few years until they finally got a distributor to get that released. Rampage. Independence Day, Resurgence, yeah. I didn't really care much for it. It was okay, but just kind of one of those movies that you want to watch maybe once or twice, and that's it. You know, just a popcorn action flick. Death Wish with uh, Bruce Willis, which I liked. Not bad. But, of course, you can't go wrong with Charles Bronson's take, man, and the several sequels that he did. Forrest Gump, Black Panther, starring the late, great Chadwick Boseman, man. Yeah, great film. Greece, Red Sparrow Trading 
places. What else we got? Annihilation, Game Night. The 1517 to Paris. Those guys were badass, man, what they did on the train. So we got uh, Matrix, Search Party, Gladiator, of course, Braveheart. Got to have those two. So there you have it. Up in Smoke, all the money in the world. Yeah, that was really cool, man, how uh, really Scott was able to pull that off. You know, with that whole debacle to get uh, Christopher Plummer to take over. But the movie in itself was pretty decent. Underrated movie. Actually, it was kind of forgotten, too. It was just, you know, released. And then people just uh, didn't really talk about it anymore. But solid film. Justice League. Looking forward to seeing uh, what they do with the uh, extended cut. Or rather, the director's cut. So there you go. The Sandlot. One of my absolute favorites. Blue Jasmine. Heat which is the director's uh, definitive edition. As good as it gets, one of my absolute favorites from Jack Nicholson, Jumanji. Something's Gotta Give. So there you have it. I think all of these other ones I've shown in my previous video, I got the Harry Potter movies. Inferno Christine, man. With, uh, and of course, directed by uh, the legend himself, the master of horror, John Carpenter. The Untouchables, wonderful French film. If you've never seen it, do check it out. I got a B-movie from uh, Seagal, End of a Gun. I don't know why I added that one, but I'm a Seagal fan. Like I said, the earlier stuff, but yeah, I try not to add some of the other stuff. I think uh, he did this other one that was pretty decent, though. I think it was called um, something Into the Sun, I think it was called. Also, Urban uh, Justice, I think it was called, which was pretty decent. Kind of reminded me of his earlier films from the 90s, but yeah, so got that. Wonder Woman. There you go, man. Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. Baywatch, How to Be a Latin Lover with uh, Eugenio Derbez. Funny movie, man. It reminded me of uh, Deuce Bigelow. So uh, what else we got? Unforgettable. Ghost in the Shell. Fifth Element. Awesome flick, man. This is Dabfire. John Wick, Chapter 2. Beauty and the Beast, the live action version. High Plains Drifter. It was actually interesting because uh, Clint and uh, John Wayne, they were supposed to work together until, uh, you know, John Wayne saw High Plains Drifter and started criticizing Clint saying, hey, you know, that's not how uh, Western movies should be made and blah, blah, blah. And Clint got pissed. He was like, hey, you know, this is my movie. I'm going to make it the way I want to make it. So they just kind of parted ways after that and didn't uh, do a movie together, which is unfortunate. It would have been cool to see those two legends together, but... Uh, yeah, High Plains Drifter, man. I think that's going to get re-released by, I think, Kino Lorber or one of the other studios. So, yeah, we'll probably pick that one up, too. La La Land, excellent musical. Sleepless with Jamie Foxx. Got some more Sandler film. Jack and Jill, man, that's a crazy film. So, we got Passengers, Fences, which won Viola Davis her Oscar. The Die Hard uh, Collection. So, yeah, you've... Uh, most likely seen these if you saw my previous video of my digital library you've seen these titles too so i'm not going to chime in any further but you can see from dust till dawn central intelligence pulp fiction beauty and the beast yeah definitely check out the remember with christopher Plummer. excellent film got the revenant san andreas the intern and i like nancy myers films i really do she really knows how to deliver nice, charming movies. Ted 2, Home Alone, Jurassic World, Jungle Book. Yeah, Jazz Jungle Book is actually my favorite um, animated film from the Disneys. Absolutely love that one. Spartacus, which got uh, released in 4K, looks gorgeous. And the 007 movies. Of course, got to have the 007 movies. And what was it? I missed out. There it is. Mad Max Fury Road. Fury, Last Stand, The Terminator movies, 1 and 2. The Interview, that was crazy, man. That was a fun movie. Lawless, really like Lawless too with Shia LaBeouf, Tom Hardy. Whiplash, which is going to get a uh, 4K release um, like in a month or so or less than that. American Pie movies, Jaws, looks fantastic in the 4K. Tintin. Chicago, Double Indemnity, I scrolled a little too fast, but yeah, Double Indemnity, excellent uh, film noir, um, 
sometimes I go back and forth as far as which one is my favorite from Noir. It's either Double Indemnity or uh, Sunset Boulevard. But, you know, I'm going to say it's a tie because they're both excellent movies. Tokyo Drift. Liar, liar. Love that one, man. Liar, liar. Fun movie. Like Big Fat Greek Wedding. Actually, I pitched an idea for uh, Neo Vardalos to... You know, because I saw the Big Fat Greek Wedding too, and it's more of the first movie. So I told her, you know what? If you ever do a third one, don't do a wedding movie. Um, this is off of uh, Twitter, you know. I was messaging her back and forth. I said, do a Big Fat Greek uh, vacation. You know, take the whole family out somewhere. I think that would have been more fun rather than a, another uh, wedding movie like, the, you know, she did for the sequel. But, eh, it is what it is. Prometheus, Saw... And uh, Schindler's List, excellent film, man, with, uh, of course, directed by, uh, well, stars Liam Neeson is directed by Spielberg, Sherlock Holmes, Skyfall, The Wolf of Wall Street, another great film, and The Woman in Black. So there you have it, guys. That's the end of my digital library. Boy, this is probably one of my longest videos I did. So um, sorry if I gave uh, some of you guys a headache, you know, rambling on. But uh, like I said, you know, I just wanted to, Talk a little bit about uh, my digital library. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for uh, taking a look. I really do appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel if you're new here. And if you're already a subscriber, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Till next time, take care.